I've got the perfect torture test for the Noco Genius Boost completely by accident. I accidentally forgot and left it outside all night. It was a hot day yesterday and then a cold night. So we had extreme heat, extreme cold, and it rained all night and all morning. See, it's wet down in there. It's, oh yeah, there's water poured out and poured off of it. Yeah, it was soaked. Now we just gotta find a vehicle that's really hard to start. Oh, and if you're not convinced that this is a totally insane torture test, I also gassed it with the water hose. Okay, so this is gonna be a true torture test because we got the van sitting here. It's been sitting here for a long time and long enough to where it's down to 1.7 volts. Yeah, that's not good, is it? Oh, and to make this torture test even worse, when I left it out, I was supposed to be taking it in to charge it up because I used it to start the Kubota diesel. And so I don't know how much charge it has left in it. Took her right up here. Now before I touch this button, I just want to say, if you have one of these, I do not recommend doing this. I'm torture testing this on purpose. I'm purposely trying to see if I can ruin this by turning it on after it's been rained on all night. If I was trying to take care of this device, I would be waiting like a few days, maybe even a week before even attempting to do anything with it in hopes that it would dry out and not cause any damage. What I want to try to find out here is if this has been rained on all night, like if you're stuck on the side of the road in the rain and it's getting rained on while you're trying to use it, will it still work? And this has been rained on all night. I can't think of a harder torture test. The battery's almost completely dead, 1.6 volts now. It's been sitting here for months without being turned over. All right, let's see if the smoke comes out. All right, there's not enough battery juice in the battery to make it cycle through here. So it's just it's just not doing anything. It's acting like the battery is completely dead. Apparently 1.6 volts is below its trigger voltage. So I press this button right here to override and force it to start charging. And there it goes. I can hear the dinger in the van, so we get the power. Don't get no better than that. All those years of carrying those big heavy booster boxes around that won't hold the charge for more than a few days. And now we have stuff like this, it's lithium ion, and you just leave it laying around for months, leave it out in the rain, leave it in the back of the car in the cold of the winter, and that kind of thing still works. Ain't the future wonderful? Thank you so much for staying late in the video. I wanna give you a little bonus tip here. That is proper voltage for idle on a vehicle with a standard alternator. Not a smart alternator like the 2020s and later, some of the 2020 and later, they have these uh, strangely computer controlled smart alternators. But just the regular alternators, this is what you would normally see if the charging system is working correctly and it's charging stuff, it's just sitting at idle. This is not a 2500 RPM test or anything like that. I don't have lights on, I don't have anything pulling it hard, but I will turn the lights on and stuff for just a second so you can see how it affects the voltage, if any. I put them on bright so they pull the most amperage. And right there you can see it dropped 0.2 volts. So it's, it's using up some of the electricity that was coming from the alternator. 
and it's still at idle, so I imagine that would go up a little bit if we were to give it some throttle, but I, I can't reach in there and give it throttle and be out here filming at the same time. And on these Fords, there is a fusible link hidden in here on these Ford vans. And you can see I have a test wire here and here that's connected so that if I ever have a problem with charging, I can connect a test lead from here to here. And if it starts charging again, then I know my fusible link is bad and needs to be replaced. If it doesn't start charging once I connect this to this, this is just a cheat. That's not factory. That's just a cheat that I put on there. But if it doesn't start charging when you connect those two, then it's not the fusible link and it's possibly the alternator or the regulator inside the alternator that's bad. Of course, this one's not bad. I'm just talking about a hypothetical situation in case you're having some kind of charging problem on your van. Maybe this information will help you diagnose it. Hey, if you like this video, we've got a whole lot more. We've got tool reviews. We've got repair videos. We've got show car videos, hot rods, mod rods, you name it. If it's got wheels on it and an engine, it's probably on this channel. So subscribe, like, and binge watch Zane Auto. Binge watch Zane Auto. Binge watch Zane Auto.